Uh, we are on. Hey, I'm uh, Bojdar Merinov. Uh, you might know me because I contributed to Godot from for quite some time. And uh, I'm going to present about blockchain in games today. And uh, I would like to begin this presentation with a hypothetical example of what the future could hold, <laughs> you know. Uh, so imagine a multiplayer game, which is also open source. It could be something like maybe a card game <coughs> or an RPG of some sort, not sure. Whatever you prefer, it's your imagination. <laughs> but uh, the game does not work on a centralized server. Instead, it uh, runs on as many machines are as provided by third parties. Yet, the third par parties are not able to cheat. You do not have to trust that each party will run the game fairly. Uh, now, to scope bigger. Imagine that uh, the game paid for its uh, execution to the people running, uh, running it. And maybe even paid for new features to developers and designers. And thus rewarding contributions instead of requiring people to voluntarily donate time and money for it to work. On the other hand, it uh, might receive money from, uh, let's say, premium supporters and players giving them some uh, in-game perks in return. Or perhaps it could be linked uh, in some way with a real-world economy, I think an exchange between uh, in-game goods and out-of-game goods. Wouldn't it be great? Uh, in fact, uh, many of the concepts needed for this to work already exist. Blockchains, uh, this buzzword. <laughs> uh, allow for a painless synchronization allow between running instances, in a way, and they can also allow in-game assets to be exchanged between players without risk of missing or, let's say, duplicated goods. Uh, smart contract technology can allow for game logic, logic to run in a distributed trustless environment. Uh, that means without a central server and without having to trust everybody. Mm. And uh, decentralized autonomous organizations uh, are organizations which uh, follow preset rules without uh, human intervention. They are built on top of those smart contracts just mentioned. And they can uh, fill in the financial part of the fi picture. Distributing, uh, distributing and uh, allocating the resources between running and developing and so on. But we don't uh, see such games popping up every day, do we? <laughs> uh, I would just uh, like to make a quick aside about <coughs> what exactly is a blockchain. So remember what we were talking just, we will continue it in a moment. Let me just explain what blockchain is. Uh, blockchain is uh, a database which uh, also stores an immutable uh, lock of uh, all past changes. Uh, they're implemented as a linked list in which each block points to the previous one uh, using uh, cryptographic hashes and content addressing. Uh, in fact, if you used Git, it actually uses this data structure to link all the commits in uh, history. Uh, <coughs> uh, this ensures uh, the immutability of blocks because later blocks are going to refer to them as by hash and thus they cannot be changed without also changing all the future blocks. <coughs> and uh, we don't call git a blockchain though. <laughs> a blockchain includes one more component which is a way for people running it uh, to reach consensus on which is the current block or what is the current state of the database. Uh, this and the ability to define which blocks are invalid al allows for things such as monetary transactions to be carried out on a blockchain. 
because uh, you can uh, give somebody money on the blockchain and eventually the network will reach a consensus that yes, you don't have this money anymore and he has it. Uh, and uh, because of the whole structure, this means that monetary transactions, for example, can be carried out electronically without having to trust any other party, such as a central server or a group of servers, such as a bank or a government or anything else. Uh, so that's about blockchains. And back to the idea of existing solutions, we also have some existing problems. Uh, we don't ha see such uh, self-funding distributed games popping up everywhere, mainly because there are some uh, problems with the existing technology which would enable it. Uh, one problem is that uh, most existing blockchains and similar software don't uh, actually have the performance or capacity to handle a big game. Uh, because, for example, uh, most mainstream blockchains uh, have uh, something on the order of 100 transactions per second, which is not little, but when you get 100 players playing your game at once, it's probably not enough. Uh, another problem is uh, transaction fees, uh, because, uh, again, mainstream blockchains uh, require the submitter of the transaction to pay a fee for its uh, processing. And this in turn turns all players into premium players, which could be good, but for our hypothetical example, it's not ideal. We want uh, premium players to just play the game and not have to pay money to do this. Mm. Transaction costs actually have a few more problems, such as uh, uh, requiring content contributors to maybe, depends on how it's implemented, maybe pay a small amount in order for their content to be listed by the blockchain or in order to submit their content before being able to get paid for producing this content, for example. And uh, it gets worse when we ask people to rate their experience, for example, with a product or a service or with the game, because they suddenly have to pay to rate, which is not exactly what rating is about. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as another uh, problem, minor this time, is the programming language barrier because most blockchains uh, do not support uh, <coughs> bigger programming languages. Instead, uh, they use custom programming languages, which give them a bit more control over the execution and execution limits, but uh, it's a barrier because you have to learn those languages in order to be able to use it. Uh, so that's why uh, Comrade Cooperative uh, we've been developing a blockchain network called Apocrypt. Uh, it uh, allows for a higher performance of smart contracts by not making different parts of the blockchain having to wait for each other to reach consensus, instead running them in parallel. And uh, it also fi uh, fixes uh, the problem with uh, transaction fees by letting smart contracts issue uh, tokens which allow the users to, co uh, to use it without having to pay a fee. Instead, the smart contract pays the fee. Uh, it uh, was initially meant to solve problems with uh, decentralized auto autonomous organizations since we were trying to make our cooperative work on the blockchain. And coincidentally, it also solves some problems with having a game on the blockchain. Maybe if uh, somebody has questions. There is one. Uh, yeah, it's there.
<laughs> uh, currently, uh, the Bitcoin blockchain yeah. um, raises a question about uh, uh, power consumption. Yeah. Will it be a problem with this uh, okay. technology? Uh, so, in order for consensus to work, you have the thing called proof. And uh, each blockchain has a different method of proving blocks. For example, Bitcoin uses the so-called proof of work. Uh, the node which is proposing a new block has to do some non-trivial work, which can be proved quickly. In the case of uh, Bitcoin, just uh, adding uh, some small amount of bytes to the block in order to get a hash smaller than a given number. And uh, this is uh, a way to <coughs> uh, rank blocks so the one with the most work becomes the current block. And this uh, ensures consensus in the end. But uh, this is actually very energy inefficient as shown in practice because uh, everybody wants to mine the next block because there is a reward for that. And it's actually pretty hard to generate those hashes. <coughs> but there is are some other ways to prove. For example, the one we are using is a proof of stake are also known as decentralized proof of stake, but they're pretty similar, which is uh, a trusted group of uh, nodes staking some amount to uh, of uh, a cryptocurrency, for example, to show that they will not cheat the system, or if they cheat, their stake will be dropped. And they then start voting on blocks. Uh, thus uh, ensuring that there is only one which is accepted and again ensuring consensus uh, there are also some other proofs like proof of authority one node says which is the next block <laughs> for example git with github would be something similar to this and uh, yeah, there are a few others which i don't remember right now does this understand the question So the conclusion uh, about power consumption, will it? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. So proof of stake is actually pretty energy efficient because you only have to get those nodes to sign, yes, this is a correct block. It's the next one. And when they sign this, they just send it over the network and everybody uh, sees that, okay, they signed it. So, okay, this is the next block. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Some questions from the string. They ask, are there any Godot games right now using this technology? Uh, so, <coughs> I don't know if there are games uh, made with Godot which use blockchain technology. I have not heard of such. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that there are no games using AppGriff right now because it's not uh, yet done. We still have to write some code and uh, run some tests. Other? Any other questions? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.